Welcome to Metal Base. My name is Tom Baker. In this video, I will be showing you the process of slicing a part for a print job and starting the print job on the, the Metal 1.0 system. First, we start by moving our build plate view so it matches the front view of the machine. This is when the red arrow is pointing to the back and the green is pointing to the left. The first step then is to find and select the parts that you want to print and open them in Orca Slicer. As you can see, I added some special features to these objects to make them easier to remove from the build plate later. On the cube, this is small pyramids, and on the tensile test part, I added a small pin. This small pin will elevate the actual part from the build plate and allow for easy support generation. I now just rotate the parts so these features are at the bottom of the print. After that, I space them out over the build plate. It is always smart to not put the parts in line of the red axis. The recoder moves from left to right, and if one part disturbs the powder bed, then it will not affect the other parts. If you do put them in line, this could happen. If we select the menu on the left, we can see that there are a number of print profiles available. In general, I only use two of them. I will explain the difference later in the video. I check if I have support enabled, and then we are ready to slice the file. I can now review the time it estimates the print to take and make changes if necessary. You can also see that now the tensile test part is supported by the green support material. You can also see that I do not get any support material in the Torx hole in the tensile test part. This is because I added some sloped walls to the bottom of that Torx hole. Now let's review the generated toolpath further. As you can see that on every layer there are two walls and the complete part is filled with infill. You can also see that the outer wall on this M8 thread is not supported by the layer underneath. This is because the slope of the thread is really on the maximum overhang of what is still printable with acceptable quality. Now I will show you the other print profile. In this profile, the infill is only printed every two layers instead of every layer. This can improve the print speed quite a bit, but it will result in a few percent less density. You can see the predicted print time has reduced from 2 hours and 11 minutes to 1 hour and 40 minutes. In the preview it also becomes clear that now the infill is not printed every layer but every other layer while the walls are printed just like normal every layer. It is also possible to do everything with 0.1 millimeter layers instead of the 0.05 millimeter layers, but this will result in degraded surface quality. For this print, the time is not really critical, so I will select the normal 0.05 millimeter layer profile and slice it again. The slicer will actually only predict the part printing time without adjusting for the recoating time. Per 1000 layers, this will add a little less than one and a half hours to the total printing time. Now we can send the file to the printer and continue there via the, the device option in Orca Slicer. On the printer, I remove the lid and measure the current distance between the powder supply piston and the, the reference level and remember that. Then it is time to lower the powder supply piston. As a rule of thumb, it is always good to have enough powder in the supply piston. From the slicing, I know that the total height of the print job is 42 millimeters. As a minimum, it is advised to have at least twice that amount in the powder supply piston. That is why I selected 90 millimeters in the move powder piston down macro. This combined with the 30 millimeters that was left when we started should give plenty of powder for this print. Now I can start loading the powder into the powder supply piston. I make sure to compact it a bit with the spatula and make sure there are not a lot of humps or valleys in the powder. I also put some powder around the build plate, so this will make preparing the powder bed faster. 
As the final manual step on the machine, I activate the nitrogen flow to the print head via the button next to the light indicator on the machine. This light has also just changed from red to blue, indicating that the lid is closed, but the oxygen content in the machine is still too high to start printing. With the lid closed and the nitrogen flow activated, it is time to run the prepare for print macro. In this macro, we need to fill a couple of variables. The expected conditioning time, the Z offset of the build plate, the dose factor during the powder bed preparation stage, and the amount of powder supply the machine has. The machine will then run the homing sequence of the X axis, recoder, Y axis, and finally the Z axis followed by a powder compacting sequence that will make the print head vibrate. This step will compact the powder in the powder supply a bit, so the machine will have reliable powder dosing during the print. Then it is time to wait for the conditioning time. A few moments later. You can see now on the light indicator on the machine that the status has changed from blue to green indicating that the oxygen level has decreased enough to allow for safe printing. The machine will show that the conditioning time has passed and will home the axis again. After the homing is finished, it will perform 15 recoding actions. The dose factor set at the start of the prepare for print action is therefore also important to make sure the powder bed preparation is correct. If you leveled the powder bed nicely, a factor of three or four is enough. If you didn't, a bigger number can be used. After every recoat, the system will show in the console how much powder is still left and also how many layers it can still print with the current dose factor. The last step before the print can be started is to check if the build plate is at exactly the correct height. In this case, it was too low, so I adjusted it. With this action, you have to remember that the Z axis is reverted and moving up is actually moving Z in the negative direction. It is also wise to first move the build plate about 0.5 millimeters too high and then lower it again. This way you will have also eliminated any play in the z-axis system. Once you can only see a slight amount of powder on the build plate, you can start the print job. The system is configured to always take the current position as the starting position. After a couple of layers, it is also possible to lower the dose factor slowly to two. So if you start with four from the prepare for print macro, first lower it to three, print a few layers, and then to two. This is all there is to do to start a print on this system.